CBC versus Coinbase. Huge case. Oh my goodness. We've seen a lot of cases in the cryptocurrency market over the last couple of years having to do with XRP, having to do with Grayscale. And so far, hand over fist, crypto has pretty much won where they deserve to win. Now, of course, Terraform Labs lost their case, but we've got quite a lot of things against Terraform ourselves. One of the things I want to talk about today is Justice Falia. I think I'm saying that name right. That is presiding over the case because today we're seeing summary hearings, uh, summary um, opinions being put forth by Coinbase and by the Securities and Exchange Commission. And I'm telling you what, it's not looking good for SEC. Gary Gensler's Securities and Exchange Commission is coming out looking like fools. Foolish. And the big part of the reason is simply because they don't have grounds to stand on. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about what's been going on in the case, why you should care, and the implications that this will likely have on Bitcoin. So let's get started. First and foremost, what's going on here is that the Securities and Exchange Commission sued Coinbase back in June along with Binance for being an unregistered broker-dealer for, um, uh, for unregistered securities and listed 12 or 13 different altcoins as uh, unregistered securities that Coinbase is transacting in. They also accused Coinbase of operating as an unregistered broker-dealer, clearinghouse, and I think custodian all at the same time. I'd have the custodian one wrong, but they, they basically accused Coinbase of acting as multiple different entities that in Wall Street and in traditional finance in securities markets are supposed to be different entities. Quite simply, the broker-dealer, the clearinghouse, the custodian, all of these are supposed to be different uh, entities in uh, traditional finance to avoid monopolies and to avoid conflicts of interest and all of these different things and to make sure that there's exposure and multiple different defenses from uh, market uh, hiccups. And so that's one of the allegations against Coinbase. And of course, one of the other allegations is, is that their staking program should have been issued, um, should have been registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Coinbase flat out denies that SEC has any grounds on all of this because they believe that the Howey test, which is now uh, 91 years old, is outdated and is not and is simply not set up to uh, judge the cryptocurrency markets because cryptocurrencies, in case you didn't know, didn't exist in 1933. Neither did the internet. Electricity was barely something that was <laughs> in most of the country. So it was a very different world back then when the SEC first got the Howey test and when the SEC was actually created back in the 30s. And also keep in mind, a big part of the reason the SEC was created in the first place was to prevent something like uh, Black, uh, like Black Friday from happening, Black Tuesday from happening, um, and uh, leading to the collapse of the entire stock market in the United States uh, economy that we saw during the Great Depression. We're in a much different era right now. There need to be protections to stop against that, and many of them, in large part, are in place. And securities laws make a lot of sense for stocks and for other publicly traded assets that act as investment contracts that doesn't work for cryptocurrency because it wasn't written for cryptocurrencies. Stocks haven't changed a whole lot in the last 90 years, what they actually are at their core. They've changed technologically. The way we trade them is now digital rather than on paper. Things have changed in that regard, but in many senses, they haven't changed what they at their core are. They're investment contracts between the company and an investor. That is not what cryptocurrencies are. And so Judge Falia, this is where we start getting into this case, realizes this. This lady has done her research. She knows what's going on in the cryptocurrency space. You can tell she's put her hours in. You can tell she's probably got a, at least a small team behind her that's helping to inform her on the way cryptocurrencies operate. And to be honest with you, I kind of wonder if she's an investor in cryptocurrency with how much she seems to know based on these opening proceedings. So there's been a lot of different quotes coming out of her that you've seen. Uh, Dan, Gambard Dan Gambardello, I always, I always mess up his name. Dan over at Crypto Capital Ventures has been covering this. He's got some really great quotes over on Twitter. So make sure to go uh, follow him on Twitter. He's been quoting some of these things. You'll be able to find the full quotes there. I don't have them memorized, but one of them that we're talking about is um, Securities and Exchange Commission's upset at Coinbase for not having, um, uh, acting as a bro uh, unregistered broker dealer, clearinghouse, all these different things at the same time. Falia, the justice, uh, the judge basically said, I don't see why I should care. So, mic drop right there. There's quite, a, there's quite a few other quotes coming out of the judge that lead us to the understanding that she really doesn't see how the 1933 Howey Act, Howey versus SEC, should be applied to the cryptocurrency space. And the reason that that's so important is because this is precedent in the making. We've got the XRP precedent, which is being brought up by Coinbase. We've got the... Um, the grayscale precedent that's being brought up to some degree by by uh, Coinbase. And so far, the justice, although we want to be careful because this is obviously very, very, very preliminary, seems to be siding with Coinbase. And she seems to understand Coinbase's argument significantly better, and she seems to think that it is the accurate argument. Now, of course, this is the first day of hearings. There's not a whole lot to go on just yet, and we do need to see how things work themselves out. But there's 
a couple of major things that can happen right now. Either one, Falia can completely dismiss the entire case as Coinbase's motion to do. And that would be a cataclysmic loss for the SEC, in which case the markets would probably go through the roof. We'll talk about the markets response to all these different options here in a minute. Um, they could also um, dismiss Coinbase and allow for the trial to continue, in which case this could drag out for months or even potentially years. Hopefully that doesn't happen. And then, of course, um, the judge can uh, allow for Coinbase's uh, motion to dismiss the entire case, but leave some kind of allowance in there for the Securities and Exchange Commission to um, renegotiate their terms, to change their approach, and then come back and then come back at the case, in which case this could still drag out months or years. We'll hopefully have an understanding of what Falia is going to do on that matter here in the next couple of weeks, and the way that the market responds is going to be very interesting. If Judge Falia does completely dismiss the case, you're going to see these altcoins moonshot. I've been helping you to build an altcoin portfolio here on the Crypto Jeb YouTube channel for months now, and I hope that you have planted the seeds in the ground that I've told you about. Many of these altcoins are being suppressed because whether they're going to be proven to be unregistered securities or not, many of them have some hesitation in the investment community because people don't want to go through the years of litigation that XRP went through. XRP got ran through the mud and it really hampered the token price for years to the point where it had to change Ripple's entire approach to the way they integrate XRP into the Ripple products to the point where XRP is not as relevant in the products that Ripple provides as it once was, effectively manipulating the token price. Um, into the ground. And that's something that we want to be careful of for these investments that we're making in altcoins. If they do start getting their own individual cases and there seems to be like there's some ground for the SEC, that's going to really hamper these token prices and we're going to want to be careful of our investments in them. What I think is more likely to happen though is that Falia is probably going to either dismiss the case or she's going to dismiss the case with um, without prejudice, meaning that the SEC can refile their terms and they can come back at it again with a new round of... of uh, accusations they can rethink things and at that point if one of those does happen then you're probably going to see somewhat neutral or somewhat positive impact on the altcoin space and on the cryptocurrency space as a whole that's probably what's going to end up happening based on the way that she's talking but we shall see this very well may go to a full-on trial if it does it will be a bit of a downer on the cryptocurrency space but i do think eventually it'll end up being a very bullish thing because i do think that the coinbase is, that the coin that coinbase's legal team is going to end up winning the case overall given enough time so for us, being investors in the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency space, especially the altcoins for this cycle, how does this impact us? Well, first of all, we need to pay very close attention to this case. And I'll be tracking it as much as I can here on the YouTube channel and sharing with you um, everything that I can find of relevance. But we also need to make sure that we are continuing to make investments in our altcoins anyway. And why? Well, the altcoins are not just trading in the United States. The United States makes up a quarter of GDP. That means there's still three quarters of GDP out there that is not under the SEC's guidance, which means that there's still a ton of money that can invest in these altcoins, even if some of them are registered as securities. And they probably will still increase dramatically, even if they do have their own cases brought about against them. XRP went through a major rally in the middle of its case. And XRP probably will go through another rally. Many of these altcoins may be um, hampered somewhat if SEC does come after them individually, but it's highly unlikely that SEC alone will be able to completely stifle the growth of these altcoins. And so they probably will still go about <clears throat> large appreciative movements from where they are right now. And that's something that we're going to want to pay very, very close attention to. Now, one of the last things I want to mention here, one of the last things I want to mention here is how we should go about our investments. I want to make sure that we continue to dollar cost average into our altcoins, because even if we do see, as I said, even if we do see cases brought against those specific altcoins, we're still going to more than likely see major rallies on them. Um, and yeah, we're going to be, we're going to be following this very closely. I'm going to be keeping you guys up to date on everything I can find about the case, so stay tuned because this is a big one. And I do think that when it is ruled, and it more than likely will be ruled eventually in favor of Coinbase, it's going to be a very big um, bullish event for crypto. Final thing I'll say here is that I think one of those rulings that we're going to end up seeing is I think you're eventually going to see Falia saying, hey, SEC, you guys don't make the law. This is a matter of law. This is an area where we need to throw this back to Congress. And that will probably end up being one of the final uh, rulings based on her understanding of the law, based on her understanding of crypto, and based on her tone, that's likely what we're going to end up seeing happen. Happen. Her saying, look, SEC, this is not your grounds. Your opinion is not law. This has to go back to Congress. At that point, this case might actually end up sending Coinbase and SEC straight to Congress for new litigation, which ultimately is what we need. We ultimately need regulatory framework in the space. We ultimately need to know who's going to regulate the space and how they're going to regulate the space because this is going to be a 10 or 50, uh, 10 or 5, um, 
a 10 to 50 trillion dollar industry, but we've got to have that regulatory clarity. So stay tuned. I'll keep you guys up to date as much as I can. Don't worry about your investment portfolios. They're going to be fine, even if SEC does come after some of these altcoins. That's why we diversify. If they come after one, you got 23 more you're invested in. You're going to be fine. Stay tuned. We got more content coming. Peace.